Hi, this is my first time speaking in a video, so sorry if the quality is pretty bad. Anyway, um, welcome to my 2022 to 2023 AP Portfolio Tour, woo woo. I actually managed to get a 5 on this, which is absolutely insane to me, and my tablet just shut off with all the information on it. Oh boy, okay, uh... <laughs> Um, this portfolio consists of 15 pieces, two of which show process and unutilized works. I'll break down the software and techniques that I use for each piece individually, or I'll just have it up visually on the slide if I don't mention it. Anyway, uh, for the written section, I said that throughout this portfolio, I chose to explore storytelling through the interactions and emotions of characters, as I wanted to see if I could tell a cohesive narrative across the span of multiple separated works. Uh, these works follow the story of a con artist who accidentally turns himself into a little light bulb man. This absurd concept allowing me to further explore this world and its characters as they are confronted by this anomaly. Which is just a ridiculously overcomplicated way of saying I just drew my characters and had fun doing it. But yeah, with no further ado, here we go. So this is the first piece in the portfolio and also the very first piece I created for the art class year in general. Uh, this introduces the protagonist named Edison, as you can see at the bottom, and this was drawn on my iPhone mini using my finger. Uh, I never fully drawn on my phone before, so this was rather difficult for me to get used to, but thankfully once I got adjusted, I was able to navigate the menus as quickly as I would on like a tablet or something. Uh, the software used for this was Ibis Paint, which all of these pieces are basically done in Ibis Paint unless I say otherwise. I had a lot of fun heavily stylizing this one, I use lots of like heavy angles and bolder confidence strokes. Uh, these brush strokes were first done with a really thick brush and then just sanded them down with the eraser tool, and it was a blast, I had a fun time. Yeah, second to third piece. Uh, I'm not gonna read the text on this one because it's small and hard to read, uh, so feel free to read it as I talk about the process or try to. I might have it linked in the description, I, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, this is the first comic page I made, or the second one too. I haven't planned this out. Uh, there is one other <laughs> being counted as a separate piece. This was drawn together with the other piece, um, and it came to a whopping 100 hours total, because I spent 50 hours for each of them. Uh, this one's very line art focused, and the comic's layout and story was redrawn and iterated upon over three times. So the first was like a rough and messy sketch from like 2022-ish, uh, 2021, uh, like the earlier. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then the second was on the computer last school year, and then the final one is the one you see now. Uh, here we have a compilation of the process of developing and creating these characters. So yeah, this was like towards the end of the portfolio due date time. So this is just me compiling all of the old images and stuff I've made and just putting it all together. Bada bing, bada boom. This piece was done within the last three days of the deadline and simply so- simply? <laughs> Sorry. And simply shows some characters walking home, uh, Edison looking pretty under the weather. I tried creating a cozy atmosphere here through the use of soft rim lighting, and paper texture was overlaid in order to add a more cozy, less kind of corporate feel. Uh, this was also a piece done within the last week of the due date, and I showed these guys advertising their latest scam product, the Objectionator. <laughs> um, the posters themselves were actually drawn first in pencil and paper, and then I took a photo and then I overlaid it over the digital work. Uh, with this piece, I really pushed myself to try a really wacky perspective, um, and I said that this warped street creates a sense of distortion that the characters would feel if they've been advertising until midnight, um, which wasn't the intention when making it, but I realized I should probably have some kind of explanation so that I'd get good marks, you know? Um, here we have some unused works and demonstration of processes, processes, the top right ones showing scrapped pieces. Uh, the top right picture was the one I readed that you just saw, and then the other two, the dance and the flowers, have similar ideas utilized that you'll see later, but a completely different composition. This one is one of my favorites. I did this one in the middle of working on the comic to take a break, and it only took around seven hours or so, so that's pretty good by comparison. <laughs> this piece shows Edison being turned into a light bulb, parts of him dissipating like a lava lamp and transforming into this new form in front of him. Uh, this piece was an excuse for me to use the incredibly saturated colors and busy textures that I love in order to reflect the chaos of the situation. I'm a huge, huge fan of saturated colors. I love art that just burns your retinas. Uh, so this was great because I got to insert my kind of color bias into there somehow. This piece was actually done on Microsoft Paint with the mouse, hence the roughness of the brush texture. Uh, this piece was to show the transformation aftermath, and using such impractical software like MS Paint really forced me to focus on lighting and color choices, and every stroke had to be kind of intentional because there's no layers or any way to blend colors. Um, and I really loved it. I think it's really funny that I got a 5 with art made in MS Paint. <laughs> So that's that's fun. This one was the controversial piece among the family. Uh, my parents wanted me to submit the sketch in its simplest form, but I went ahead and finished it anyway because I thought the rough sketch was unfinished and ugly. 
Uh, anyway, this piece also started in MS Paint, but I touched it up and adjusted the values using Ibis Paint, making it a mixed media project, kinda, in terms of digital, or as close as you can get to mixed media. This art shows Edison in his new light bulb form, feeling very small and disoriented, and I tried to evoke that feeling by utilizing an unusually tall canvas and maintaining roughness and lack of detail akin to watercolors. Here we have the rework of the dancing piece seen in the scrap pieces section. Uh, this background was taken from a piece I did last year, um, and I redid the characters with my hopefully improved art skills. This was based on the Art Nouveau style, which was fitting, also considering the time period that the story is meant to be set in. Uh, this piece was once again done on my phone with my finger. Here we have the lamp lighter, as seen in the character planning sheet, noticing Edison sitting in a street lamp. Uh, the street lamp idea was one of the earliest concepts for this character, where I thought it served as an equally charming and practical place for a light bulb man to reside. In this piece, I played around with color yet again and experimented with this unusual mix of rendered and flat work. This was originally sketched during psychology class instead of paying attention, um, and was used as the base for digital work on my phone. This piece, once again done on my phone, had me pushed completely out of my comfort zone as I just don't like drawing buildings at all. Buildings are not fun. I <laughs> I don't like buildings. Um, however, I was able to spare my wrists the pain of coloring each individual building by trying gradient mapping, which basically means you start in grayscale values and then assign each of those values to a color. Uh, so like black turns to purple, gray, orange, and white to yellow, and all of the blending shifts hue accordingly. Uh, this meant I could focus on values and making things stand up properly and then splash on the color afterwards. Most people try gradient mapping in individual sections of the piece with different colors assigned to the values, but I was tired, so that didn't happen. <laughs> However, I do really like the monochrome feel this one has. I think it sets it apart from the more colorful works in the collection. Uh, this was drawn in Ibis Paint, but uh, the gradient mapping itself, I just stole my dad's computer and used Photoshop on there because I couldn't find any gradient mapping in Ibis Paint. Here we have another MS Paint piece, this one taking inspiration from the original flower garden idea shown in the scrapped work section. This piece was made to add more blue to the portfolio because most of these pieces are very warm. If I were to do this piece again, I'd definitely add more detail to Rebecca here instead of leaving her kind of just formless, and maybe add more plants littering the pot. As it stands now though, I think it's perfectly serviceable. And finally, here's the last work in the portfolio. Woo woo! Oh yeah, <laughs> we made it. Uh, for this one, I aim to create a really detailed piece with the shadows actually in the line art as opposed to underneath. Uh, you can see this in like the hair details and cross hatching in the background. This was done to kind of emulate a more newspaper y style. <laughs> what? This was done to emulate a more newspaper art style, which matches the whole 1800s inspired aesthetic I've got going on here. Uh, this piece also allowed me to put that cafe concept to good use, the door being slanted at the corner, proving very hard to draw. <laughs> this work was really difficult and different to what I usually do, so it proved itself a great learning experience. I had fun. And yeah, that is all. That is the whole portfolio. Uh, thank you so much for listening through all that. If, if you did, which you probably did because you're here now, unless you like, skipped through it, in which case that's rude, but okay. okay. Um, while this process has been very difficult, requiring me to work on it 24-7, the skills and time management abilities I learned from this experience are so invaluable. Uh, shout out to Miss Sawyer's class on Spotify so I could read To Kill a Mockingbird and work on my portfolio at the same time. And big thank you to uh, my teachers, uh, not just my art teacher who's amazing, she's great, I love her, um, and my amazing classmates, but also to the teachers and my other classes for letting me work on my art during their lesson. <laughs> um, yeah, it was been so great uh, to focus this intensely on something I'm actually passionate about and really care about. Um, and yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's all. Bye.